Okay, um, it's always easier to groom your casts when they are dry. You'll be able to see the little blebs and imperfections a lot better. And so uh, we'll start on this cast. I'm using a tanner carver and I'm just going to go around and dress it up a little bit. These bubbles or blebs that occur out on these uh, facial and lingual surfaces are not as critical obviously as the ones that that occur affect the quality of our mounting but they do help the cast to look just a little bit better and uh, so we've kind of gone around the the buckle hopefully we don't have too many there's a small one right there on the lingual and there's another one right here it's a good idea to Kind of move your, your cast around. There's one right there. And look at it from multiple directions. If you're going to err when you cut these ones out on the occlusal, you want to take a little bit more than what would be there so that you don't have a high spot when you uh, introduce your bite record uh, later on. So that's that's about it there. Oh, we don't have any air there, but not here. So something like something like that. And uh, once you've got a good clean occlusal uh, surface, you're ready to, to uh, trim your model next. So we'll go to the maxillary cast and do the same thing. Thank you. Okay, our maxillary cast has a few more imperfections on it than our uh, than our mandibular cast, but we'll we'll go ahead and get those off. Again, you don't want anything positive, anything that's sticking up, that's not part of the anatomy. You'd rather have it taken a little bit further down into the tooth so that you don't uh, end up with an inaccurate mounting. So we really got some nasties right there. Okay. And most of these probably won't interfere or have any interaction with our wax record. Those could right there. So the, uh, the better impression you get, obviously, that uh, makes every subsequent job after that much easier to do. There's a nasty one right there. Fortunately, it broke loose pretty easily. So, uh, just see how that works. Oh, there's another one right down inside that valley. And there's some more right over here. Again, it really helps to turn your cast around and look at it from multiple angles. Just when you think you've got it nice and clean, you'll turn it around, look at it from a different direction, and uh, you'll find more. So again, these down on the buccal and lingual aspects are not going to be as critical when it comes to mounting accuracy. Uh, but the occlusal ones, especially if you're mounting something for uh, crown and bridge, you're looking for something to be very, very accurate. You want to take the time to uh, get your cast as accurate as you can. That's about it. A little 
little bit more right there. Yeah, let's see how that looks. I'm still not real happy with this right in there. This is looking better. And I think, uh, oh, there's a little one right there. And another one over here. So take a little time at this stage and it will uh, pay dividends in accuracy down the road. Hopefully uh, that's got the upper cast. Very good. Now it's time to trim.